Dying Light 2 has an interesting take on the zombie gaming genre and like its predecessor is heavily focused on parkour. There are however no guns because besides everyone, who likes shooting zombies? The streets are crawling with the little malakas so it's far safer to get around on the rooftops. They're green and lush and you'll even find other survivors up here like this guy. We're stealing from your lover's husband's field? Voice of an angel and this is a building not a field but close. You'll also be faced with a range of challenging ethical decisions like should you help people who are in need. Anyway, I was keen to check this game out because I enjoyed the first one. And so I load in, pick my settings, and then the game crashes immediately. It's crazy, sometimes other humans die, sometimes I die, and sometimes my entire console died. It's next level immersion. The first thing I have to do is complete the prologue. This teaches me how to jump and leap around. I make a friend called Spike and he's like, hey bro, can you collect some honey for me? Which I mean I do. Collecting honey is a surprisingly huge part of this game. Bees are a pretty fascinating insect, I guess. It's getting dark, so we find a mansion to spend the night in. The people who used to live here had one of those wholesome end of the world parties where you gather all of your closest friends and family and then all OD on pills and end your life together. I love that this guy thought he should put his hat on before he parted ways with the world. He either wanted to look drippy or was genuinely worried about the UV rays. I have a beer with Spike and we watch the sunset together. He then says he has a bad feeling about me and proceeds to straight up abandon me. I'm sure he'll reach back out when I'm 18 years old or if I become famous. He did give me a bat before he left, so silver lining. I head out to find a place to sleep because apparently the 8 bedroom mega mansion wasn't adequate. The game advises that I sneak past this horde of zombies but I didn't download this not to fight these things. I beat each and every one of them to death from the safety of the truck's trailer. Who needs guns when you have 2 foot ledges? I arrive at my new temporary home and hit the sack. I'm quite envious at how fast this guy falls asleep. The sun comes up and I've got to reach the city so I can find information on my long lost sister who has AIDS or something. It's important I get there before dark because that's when the zombies are at their most dangerous. The issue is, the only way into the city is through some dark sketchy subway tunnels. What could go wrong? To no one's surprise, a lot goes wrong. I'm attacked by an undead heifer and bitten so now I'm infected which isn't ideal. I then meet these tunnel guys and my character just wanders over and is like, hey champ, how are you? This also doesn't go well. Who would have guessed the hockey mask wearing psychopath with blood dripping down his neck didn't want to cuddle? I brawl my way out of the sewers because I forgot to mention I'm the best fighter in the world. I reach the city and freedom at last, except just kidding, the locals try to hang me. Just a good old fashioned public execution so the kids have something to talk about. This man saves me though, what a beast. I thank him by spamming B and skipping through everything he has to say. The open world has been reached and our new friend is going to help us find a cure for our infection. That is one goal, yes, but my personal goal will be publicly executing as many locals as I can. I want revenge and it will be sweet. My boy shows me these little gardens that people have made and mostly just how to steal from them. I proceed to gather some more honey. Premium beehive gameplay. Bees do play a crucial role in fertilizing plants and just because there's a zombie outbreak doesn't mean pollination has to stop. Now that it's extremely dark and terrifying, we figure it's the perfect ambience to break into a hospital and find a cure to my infection. I'm no detective, but I don't think a qualified hospital staff member was wheeling this bed as they have brutally crushed someone. I'm then required to carefully sneak past a bunch of sleeping zombies. Honestly good on them as there's nothing more healthy than getting a full night's rest. The game then just goes full horror and it reminds me of when I played Outlast 2. My mate Crosby absolutely stitched me up and uploaded a video a year ago called Modest Pelican Yells at Man in Wheelchair Rare Footage. This is awesome. <laughs> oh, Why? Oh. I find the medicine and escape the hospital and just like that I'm a healthy man. I make my way towards the church as that seems to be the base of operation for these larrikins. On my way I spot a few of them holding a funeral service for one of their fallen comrades. There's nothing more sentimental than burying your friend in a pile of sand in the middle of the road. Well at least they tried to bury him, he's kind of just half sticking out. I proceed to start swinging my broken shovel and take one of them down while the rest panic and flee. I will never forget that these savages tried to hang me. I arrive at the church ready to repent and drink holy water. Or so I had planned but there's a sign saying out of water. I can deal with the hangings, the beheadings and the undead chasing me around medical facilities but this is a bold direction for the developers to take the story in. The little community they have here is just as bad. This man has a sign saying if life gives you lemon, add vodka. That sign is twisted. There's no water so why would that man be encouraging binge drinking which dehydrates you faster? This town is a joke. Look at this dumbass kid looking at the floor like she's never seen a limestone tile before. Read a book. I offer to help some guy get electrical parts for his electric fence because it's the only way to progress the story not because I'm trying to build rapport. 
Outside the town is where you find the real questionable characters. I found this lad chomping down on a squash. It wouldn't be that weird if he wasn't standing next to his friend who is being absolutely demolished by roaches. I take this opportunity to gather a little more honey. I'm basically a beekeeper at this point, it's lit. I find the electrical parts, but there are zombies absolutely everywhere. Fortunately in high school, I was the kind of lad to skip out on having sex so that I could stay home and grind Call of Duty zombies with the boys. That was mainly because no girl wanted to have sex with me, as well as being one lanky unit. I also went to an extremely Christian school and they taught us that if you had sex before marriage, you would rot in the fiery pits of hell being tortured for eternity. As you can imagine, it made it pretty hard to get laid. I got an over the pants wristy once though, so yeah, pretty cool. On my way back, I notice an injured citizen being nursed by two men. Apparently she had a stomach ache. It becomes clear that they're too weak hearted to euthanize her, so I step up and do what has to be done. I run back to the church so my man can fix his electric fence. He does it and it kills one of the goats. I assumed the electric fence was to keep the zombies out, not to keep in the goats. Doesn't seem like a great prioritization of resources as those parts were quite hard to get. My next task is to find out what's been happening to the water supply as apparently it's been poisoned. Now this is a quest I can really get behind. Some people are saying there is no water, some people are saying it's been poisoned. Let's get some answers. I break into this apartment via lock picking and roll up on this woman who's surprisingly calm and happy to speak to me. This almost never happens when I do it in real life. She's like, silly me, instead of giving my husband vodka, I gave him water which I tell her is poisoned. She may have just killed the love of her life, but her heart was in the right place. Stay hydrated. I run over to find the big man and I have the option to either tell him that the water is poisoned or give him the vodka. I decide not to tell him and just give him the booze so that hopefully he dies and I can hit on his wife later without feeling guilty. Now it's time to figure out who's been poisoning the water in the first place. I clear out the water facility by slicing and dicing my way through a horde of zombies. I put this dope shock attachment onto my blade and it's quite satisfying to use. The only thing that would make this more satisfying is if I had a Daewoo Precision Industry USAS-12 combat shotgun. I meet the man behind it all and he's like, sorry bro, I poisoned the water to try and kill some thieves who were stealing it. The problem is the thieves didn't actually steal the poisoned water batch so he accidentally killed countless innocent men, women and children. These are the same people who tried to hang me, so I tell him his secret's safe with me as I see this as a win-win. He accidentally committed a genocide, I'm intentionally planning a genocide, potato batata. Plus he gave me several bags of flour for some reason, so if I suddenly want to start baking small goods, I'm sorted. It's now time to prepare for war. In the book of Matthew it says if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. If anyone takes your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. But if anyone tries to publicly hang you, then message your mate Jezo and form a kill squad so that you can run through the streets massacring everyone. I meet Jezo on the roof of a tall building for cinematic effect. It turns out he's a far higher level than I am and supplies me with new weapons. Strong blades, a bow, C4 explosives, and even a boomstick shotgun that you can fire twice and then it breaks. We majestically leap off the building onto the highway, but I miscalculate the jump and fall to an excruciating and rather embarrassing death. Jezo competently makes his way down and revives me. I appreciate it, but I'll forever think he's weak for not euthanizing me. We scout the vicinity for our first target and then spot a man sitting by himself looking kinda cute and lonely. Jezo places a C4 behind him and fortunately he has the spatial awareness of a dead hooker and continues sitting there cluelessly contemplating his existence. The detonation goes off and the man wears the explosion like a champion. In his spare time, I guess he tanks for Overwatch Pro Team, so I cut off his limbs. We forge forward, murdering anyone in our path who has a pulse. We then come across another funeral. I'll never understand why these people feel the need to bury their dead on pavement. This would be an incredibly shallow grave and given there is a literal zombie apocalypse, maybe sticking to the textbook six foot under rule would be wise. Either way, we sprinkle a healthy amount of C4 around. I guess they thought we were doing it in a respectful way like they were roses or something because they didn't seem too bothered. Kill confirmed. We reach the church town and run around picking off the fleeing survivors. I've said it before, but I quite often think about what I'd do if a zombie apocalypse broke out. First thing I would do is ditch my girlfriend Anna. Yes, we've been together for almost eight years, but that doesn't make her any less of a liability. For a petite girl, she eats quite a lot and it'd be a tough decision, but one I'd make quickly. Next, I would go out to Anna's dad's farm where there's guns, food, and safety. He'd ask where Anna is, and I would lie and say that she just disappeared. I'd have to live out my remaining years with the guilt of what I'd done, but I'd be living those years with a full stomach of nourishing food, preferably prepared by Anna's dad. After some time, I'd take the risky journey to a major city and find a radio station where I could transmit a message to as many people as possible. 
I'd then pull out an iPod Classic from my pocket, one that I'd kept switched off this entire time, ready for this moment. I'd plug it into the sound system and let it play. The struggling survivors would pause for a moment, wondering what they were hearing. Could this be a message from their loved ones? Maybe a rescue mission for food and supplies? No, it is Rick Astley's hit song, Never Gonna Give You Up. And I would have just executed the most brilliant and possibly last Rick roll the world would ever see. I feel that I've had sufficient revenge from the hanging attempt and can now rest easy. We held a Discord event the other night where people could ask one question on the main stage. This guy wanted to know why he was temporarily banned. Oh, and then I warned you for um, <laughs> Nazi imagery in general. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and then Super Chaos muted you for talking about drugs despite warning. That was on Christmas. <laughs> oh, man. Make sure you join the Discord. It's where dreams become reality. Link below. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hit that like if you enjoyed this video. Otherwise, I love you and goodbye.